Alright everyone, welcome back once more to some more of the Nonary games. So I gotta say right now, we are currently on a new place called The Laboratory. And honestly, it's pretty cool that we're finally with other people because we get to see some different perspectives in these new routes we're going through. And because of that, we are even learned of some new info in regards to uh, Snake. So, I mean, if anything, I'm looking forward to learning about the other characters in due time. So we're going to continue on from where we last left off, and if anything else, guys, let's keep it going. Thank you all for watching. Alright guys, and we are back. So we pretty much got the keys already. I think we could just got you know, get Clover free. I think this will work. Oh wait, no, we can just use it. Wait. This is the monitor. There are a whole lot of cables on this table. Alright, no. How about... the key here. It's the control for an electronic door lock. There's a red line to display that means it's locked. If we can get the light to turn green then maybe we can get Clover back. So we use the... it's green. How about... this. Junpei, thank you so much for everything. Oh, what's this all about? And, and also, I'm sorry I messed up. Okay, we can talk about this when we get you out, okay? Just hang on, Clover. I'm going to get you out of there right away. Yay. I think this is the first time I've actually seen a genuine smile out of this chick. Alright, so obviously we can't do that. I got the machine to go green, so... Something has to give. Ah... Uh, hmm. Junpei, this thing in here... This thing in here is, in, is on now. Yeah, that's because we activated the power over on this side. Could you, like, play with it a little? Okay, yeah. I'll turn- I'll turn this dial here. I don't think it's working. Nothing happened. Maybe she missed something. I should ask her to look around the room again. No, not that one. No. Maybe if you increase the voltage. Roger, will do. Okay, I'm gonna go all the way to max voltage. But max voltage? Hey! Wait, Clover! Ah! What? Um, I think, uh... You fried his brain. Oh my god! There's a mannequin's head! Oh man, that sounds like a fire alarm. What the hell? Fire detected, fire detected. The emergency system will be activated. Evacuate the room immediately. So they finally work. Is she free? Damn, the gate's still shut. Uh-oh. Ah. Uh, oh, it's open. Yes! Junpei, look, the light. Yes, it's green. The emergency system is activated and disabled and disable the lock. Now we can save Clover. Come on, kid, jump! She's safe. Oh man, that spoke of some serious business. Time to close this door again, I think. Clover, are you okay? Are you hurt? <laughs> Damn, she's coughing so hard she can't even talk. <sighs> of course I'm not alright. What the hell took you so long, you big jerk? I was almost dead. So sorry, I was going as fast as I could. You two can do this later. Right now, we need to get the hell out of here. The fire's not going to stay in that room forever. And you're right. <sighs> Whew, thank God we got out of there. Yeah, finally. <coughs> oh, yeah. <sighs> All right, let's go. Okay. Damn, none of these open. They're all locked. How about that one? Let's hope this is the door with the prize. Jumpy! Huh? June? Santa! Seven! Alright guys, I had to cut the video because it's pretty much repeating what we did in the previous playthrough anyway. All those cutscenes were the same. So we're back at this point in the choices. Uh, last time I chose door one, this time we're gonna go to door six. So here we go. 
Hmm. <sighs> Why don't Seven and Lotus go through door one with me? What about me? Isn't that obvious? Wasn't one of the teens just complaining that they didn't have a one? You mean I should join Santa's team? Yes. Huh. I understand. I'll go through door six then. Of course you just had to go with me. If we do as Clover has suggested, we can all pass through a numbered door and no one will be left behind. This seems to be the most reasonable solution. Seven, Lotus, what do you guys think? I don't have a problem with it. Me either. All right then, we're good to go. See you later. Wait, Clover, don't move on your own. Oh, I'll be going too then. Yeah, be careful. We should get going as well. This is E Deck. Okay, so last time it was me, Clover, and uh, Ace. This time it's June. All right. There should be a door at the end of the hall. All right, let's go. Oh, and Santa? Okay. There it is. You guys ready? Yeah. Then let's get to it. found it! It's right there! Uh... <gasps> oh, it stopped. Yes! It stopped! Whew. I don't believe I'll ever get used to that. I'm not sure it's something I'd want to get used to. We should finish this game before imminent death becomes a normal thing. You got that right. Once I'm out of this hellhole, I'm taking a nice long vacation. <laughs> I agree. All right, let's go. This door looks heavy. But it's not locked. I'm opening it. Whoa, what the hell is this? This place is a bigger area than the last areas we went through. This has to be the biggest room so far. The ceiling is pretty high, too. Huh. It could be two stories. Maybe even more. This space could be utilizing the entire length of the ship. What's that huge Kamaboko-looking building in the middle? Kamaboko? <laughs> well, I guess that's as good of a description of it as any. I see stairs, so we may as well head over to them. Yeah, but... This section's barely wide enough to fit one person. You're right. Whoa, you can't even tell the shape when you're this close. Let's check out the other side, too. This looks to be the steam engine room. The steam engine room? Yes, that thing that looks like a cross-section of a mushroom is the boiler. You see the three round doors near the bottom? Coal is put into those and burned which heats the water, producing steam. The same thing that drives a steam engine. This one is simply somewhat larger. I see. It doesn't appear to be running right now. All right, let's split up. Hey, what's wrong? Are you all right? Hey, June. Jumpy. You, oh, you're, you're really warm. Is your fever coming back? Yes, y yes. It probably is, but I'm fine. Please, don't worry about me. I just need to rest, and I'll be fine. See, as much as I want to let her rest, we're running on low on time, so... Okay, okay, uh, here, sit down, uh, careful. <laughs> Thank you. Ace, Santa. Yes. Right. All right, let's get started. Hang in there, June. I'm gonna get you out of here real soon. That confidence, though, right? Steam engine room. 
Yeah, it's so weird seeing it from above. Ah, where am I going through now? Can we go up the steps? There are a bunch of wooden boxes over here by the wall. I already looked through those. There's nothing there. There you go. Yep, so we can. Okay. Oh, we won't be able to use these yet. I'm not even going to bother. Okay, let's keep going up. Interesting. Door A. One of the doors in the furnace. There's an A on it. There's a circular wheel in the center of the door. Alright, let's give that sucker a twist. Well, it's noisy, but it opens. And it's totally pitch black in there. <laughs> we should, um, go in here. Alright, let's go. This looks just like the door we went into. Uh, where are we? It must be on the other side, yes? Which would put us directly above the conveyor belt. At any rate, we should keep moving. There's a great deal we've yet to investigate. Uh-huh. Okay, C. Okay, well... I mean... Well, anyway, it looks like that's the pipe. Looks like the bomb connects to the conveyor belt housing. Then coal must come out of this pipe on the conveyor belt. In other words, there must be a great deal of coal in that pipe. Okay, went through A, let's go to B. Oh. Okay, that was weird. The stairs back down should be on the other side of these boxes. You have an excellent memory. Use that to draw a map inside your head. That way you won't get lost. Hey, well, those guys, huh? Mental mappers. Ah, uh huh. What's this? Alright, let's give this wheel a spin. What? That's weird. I don't feel any resistance. Ah! Oh, it came off. Fantastic. It's a wheel that seems to be a part of the winch. There are some pegs on the back that look like they go into holes in the winch. Ah, oh, well, you know what that means, right? Good job, genius. You broke it. I didn't break it. It broke all by itself. <laughs> Alright, so I guess this means we find a door that has no wheel. Can I see what's this door? No? Oh, it's an A. Okay. Uh, Alright, can we go any further here? Or is that as far as we go? Yep, boxes. Alright, so I guess we go back to B. Alright, there should be a C here then, right? 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 Is this the- Oh, it's a different one. Okay, cool. The hand-operated winch. Um, there's no wheel to turn. Oh yeah! Got the wheel I pulled off the other winch, don't I? Let's see if it fits. Sweet, it's a perfect fit, like they were made for each other. Not shaky at all. Good, should be able to turn this now. Good work, Junpei. Should be able to haul up the wooden box now. You see? The wooden box. It's under the catwalk. Can you see it? It's hanging from the rope in the witch, isn't it? It looks like there's some sort of device in the box. I'm not sure what it is. Anyway, you might as well turn that wheel now. I'm counting on you. And you can't do it yourself? What happened? The wheel only turns to the left. Only turns to the left? That means we can't wheel up the rope. Yeah, we can only let the rope down. Interesting. I don't think that'll be a problem. We'll simply need to go downstairs after laying the wooden box down. Be counting on you, Junpei. Sure thing, no sweat. I believe the box has reached the floor. Yeah. June's down over by there. She doesn't seem to be improving. 
Well, of course not. She's not going to just get better right away, you know? It'll take time. What could be causing this, I wonder? Illness, perhaps? Really, genius? Nah, it's got to be exhaustion. She gets dropped into some weird-ass ship, forced to play some messed-up game. If you think about it, it's a lot weirder that we aren't freaking out just like her, you know? You know, it's just crazy now that we know what happens in the coffin ending. This guy, Santa over here, that guy's an actor. So you're saying we're abnormal? Yeah, we're just running around this room, solving all these puzzles like it's just business as usual. How the hell could you call that normal? We're just guinea pigs. A guinea pig? You mean like a lab rat? You mean we're being used for some sort of experiment? Is that what you're saying? Dunno. But it does seem like a possibility, you know? You know, speaking of experiments, there was this experiment some scientists did with rats. First, they took a squarish C-shaped tank and filled it with enough water that the rats could drown in it. The tank has two exits. Just to make it easy, we'll call one A and the other B. Exit A is pitch black, so dark even a rat can't see anything. But exit B is electrified, which means the rat can't leave through it. So, what would a rat do if it was put in this situation? Which exit would the rat choose? B, of course. The rat has no way of knowing that exit B is electrified. Exactly. The rat goes to exit B. Of course, like I said, it's electrified. Which means the rat can't get out that way. So, after a lot of trial and error, the rat finally finds exit A. Hmm. I can't say that's very interesting or relevant. It's simply the story of a laboratory experiment. You're right. It isn't very interesting. Yet. Hmm? See, these scientists repeated this experiment over and over, using hundreds of different rats over several generations. This produced some surprising results. With each generation, the rats took less time to find the correct exit. Eventually, a rat was put in the tank who instantly chose exit A without even attempting to go to exit B. But that wasn't the most impressive part. The same experiment was conducted in another laboratory, far from the original one, with the same results. No, on second thought, the results weren't really the same. The rats in this second experiment began the trials with significantly faster times than the first rats in the initial one. These rats weren't related to the others and had never even come in contact with them. And yet, they all easily found their way to exit A as though they already knew. What did it mean? Are you suggesting something like telepathy? They were passing information to one another through some undetectable medium? <laughs> How the hell would I know? I am more shocked that he would come to the conclusion of telepathy because I'm still trying to figure it out. I mean, I know they brought up the subject earlier, but even so, like, that's not the first guess most people would come up with when it comes to that experiment. I'm not any kind of scientist. I don't know what made him do that, but I do know that story's true. And if you've got another explanation, I'd sure love to hear it. Hmm. Come on, let's get going. There's still a lot here we haven't checked out. And we gotta get the hell out of here before June passes out. Hey, wait. There's something I want to ask you. What? Why did they use that tank for the experiment? Huh? Well, I mean, it seems like you could conduct the same experiment without the water. They could have just used a dry box, you know? If they needed to motivate the rats to escape, they could have... I don't know put some bait by exit B or, or something. I mean, do they really have to make it so the rats can drown? You know, the word emergency comes from the same root as the word emerge. You ever think about that? Huh? Well, an emergency is something urgent, often something dangerous. And to emerge means to sort of come out or appear or rise out of something else. So what's going to emerge in an emergency? Inspiration. Inspiration? Yeah. Think about it. When the chips are down, either you crack or your mind focuses and pulls up what you need. So you're saying that's eventually what the next generation of rats did? They somehow focused, got the answer, and left to the safety uh, exit? So in an emergency, your real potential emerges. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. That's why the rats had to drown. 
They had to be in danger. There had to be an emergency for inspiration to emerge. Oh. Okay, that was an uh, interesting uh, lecture. Another educational uh, <laughs> explanation that we technically didn't need, but it was nice to know. Okay, I guess we gotta go back down, right? Did we go through... Alright, then... I'm confusing myself. Alright, did we leave through B? Hold on. No, I... Mm, a. Alright, then we go downstairs. Oh, wait. Go back up. I just saw the thing. Wait, can we turn around? There it is. There's a pair of wooden boxes here. There's nothing in them. How about this one? No. Look, it's, it's some kind of snowman secret meeting. It's bags of sand. Just a counterweight when you're lifting something with a pulley system. Man, you're too serious. I thought these were the things we brought down. Maybe I'm wrong. Hold on. Wait, is it that box? No, no, hold on. No, it's the same box. Yeah, it's the same one. Uh, same one. What is this? Given its placement, it's must unlock the door to the left. There's a weird indentation on the top of this thing. Think that means you have to insert something here? I would imagine so. Oh boy, okay. Got another thing to find. Alright, let me check the right. Conveyor belt. Right? Found it. Okay, that's where it was. Control panel for something. Some kind of machine. Maybe a control panel. <laughs> really? I'm guessing the control panel goes in here. Well, there's only one way to find out. And you go. Dude, you did it! Everything looks alright. Okay, but what do we do now? Oh, and you press the button next to it. <laughs> the orange one? Yes. Alright, I'll do that. Push it. Sweet. All sorts of lights are lighting up on this thing. And, oh, yes! I think I just heard the something turn. What's that? What happened? Should be look, the conveyor belt's moving. The conveyor belt? Well, I guess it's done moving now. Still a bunch of coal in the belt though. It looks like a bunch of it got dumped off the end of the belt into that wooden box where we found the control panel. Coal. Box filled with coal. Okay. Alright guys, so I ended up finding this here. I'm guessing I gotta put coal in here. So hold that, let's just put coal in the- Yep, exactly. Maybe if we can get some coal in here and set it on fire, let's do it. Alright, that's the last of it. No coal left in the wooden box. And nothing. Great. Well, I guess I should have expected that. Why would just throwing coal into the cold furnace do anything? Oh well, a man can dream. Junpei, explain it to me again. You're planning to stoke the furnace with coal, which will heat the water stored up there and make steam, which will then drive something else. Am I correct? In other words, you want to generate enough pressure with the steam to power the turbine and drive the steam engine, right? Yeah, I guess that's the uh, gist of it. Hmm. Well, in that case, this isn't enough coal. This furnace is enormous, so we're gonna need a whole hell of a lot more coal than this. Very well then, if the three of us work together, then we should manage to fill it much faster. I... I wanna help too. Man, I totally didn't even see her walk up. Are you feeling up to that? Yes. Yeah, right, you look like you're one stiff breeze away from falling over, June. I think you'd better rest some more, right? But I... No arguing. We need your rest. So you just stay there. We'll handle this. Okay. I understand. Alright, time for some manly work. <laughs> Let's get this coal into those furnaces.
Man, this is a lot of work. Alright, I think this should be sufficient. Alright, now we just gotta light it. Junpei, hand me your matches. What makes you think I have matches? Let's see. And how are we gonna light it? Perhaps there's a device nearby that will allow us to remotely ignite the coal. Let's take a look, shall we? Some sort of ignition device, huh? I'm guessing it's the one I couldn't activate yet at the time. So now that we did the whole cool thing. Ah. No. Try to hit the stairs. There you go. Let's try this again. Oh, it's all green now. Let's go. Is this? I think it might be. It probably is. I think this is how we might ignite the furnace. That means that if we move that thing down. Alright, let's do it. Here we go. Hey Junpei, Ace, look at this. There's big gears turning under the boiler here. The gears. They're spinning. What are you guys waiting for? Let's start looking. Oh, you know, those are the things that I have to put in the... On the, uh, what do you call, the altar or pillar thingy. Go disc, thank you. I'm not even gonna bother examining it. I know where to go. And then we'll take this one. Bronze, thank you. And then we'll go take the last one. Up top. Silver, okay. And then we take it to, uh... The stairs here. Hold on. Oh no. Yep, right here. Alright, let's go with top first. Looks like this thing unlocks the door. There's a depression here that looks like it's outlined for three circles laid on top of each other in a triangle. Maybe if we put those three discs we found into this thing. Well, there's only one way to find out. Let's stick them in. Huh? That's odd. Nothing's happening. Maybe you're, I don't know, putting them in the wrong places? Perhaps you have them facing the wrong directions. Perhaps you should rotate the disc to make them... To make some of the lines connect to one another. Hmm. Well, no harm in trying. Okay. When the disc is touched, it will rotate a certain amount. When the white arrow is touched, the discs are switched. Please note when the discs are switched, the angles for the discs are reset. Alright. Silver... Goes here. And then we turn it. Um, gold was over here. Let me turn it further. Okay, then we turn this. No, this is wrong. Oh, no, it's not wrong. We're kind of there. <laughs> I did it! The red lines on these discs. I think maybe I can make a star polygon with these. Oh yes! Yes! The door's open! Alright Junpei, why don't you go get Jun now? Santa and I will keep an eye on this door. Why do we need to do that? Even if it shuts, we know how to solve the puzzle now. We could just open it again. Well, I suppose that's true. Shall all three of us go and collect Jun then? Nah, I'm cool. I'll let Junpei handle it. So are you only interested in being contrary? All right, I'll go get June. I'll be right back. Oh, Jumpy! Are you okay? Yes, I'm fine now. I'm sorry I made you worry. Uh, let me check. <gasps> Good. You're feeling a lot better. Are you sure you're all right? Oh, you're such a warrior, Jumpy. Oops, I mean, <laughs> warrior. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's go. Go where? Oh, right. I didn't tell you. We got the exit open, so... Great! Let's go! Oh, it's... Santa? What are you looking at? It's a photo. It's my sister. Sister? Santa, you've got a sister? Yeah. Kid was cute as a button. She was only about an inch tall then? <laughs> Oh, sorry. I guess an inch is a little large for a button. Probably more like a half inch. Mm. 
Sorry. Why are you looking at it? <sighs> I was her Santa Claus. Wait, what? We didn't have parents. They bought it in an accident when we were still kids. So I had to be like her dad. And that meant that I bought her Christmas presents every year. On Christmas Eve, I'd leave the present next to her pillow. And the next morning, she'd come running into my room with this big smile. Look, look, Santa left me a present. He got me that doll I really wanted. I'm so glad he got my letter. She was always so excited. I was the one who told her to write those letters. I'd say, write down something you want and mail it to Santa. The address I gave her was somewhere in Northern Europe that doesn't exist. Anyway, she'd write the letter and stamp it and send it out. And then a few days later, it'd show up back in her mailbox marked address unknown. I'd open the letters before she figured out they'd been sent back. Once I had the letter, I'd go around to a couple stores with some money I'd saved up over the year and buy her the stuff she'd asked for. It took a lot of saving, but I managed to buy her presents every year. Huh. Huh. But one year, her letter was different. She didn't write a list of toys she wanted or anything like that. Instead, it said, I don't want any presents this year. Instead, I want you to make my wish come true. My wish is that we'll be happy like this for a really, really long time. That was it. Nothing else. But I couldn't make that wish come true. Some Santa I am. What happened? She died. She was killed. Nine years ago. Oh. <gasps> All right. Let's go. Hmm. Huh? Hey, what are you two doing? Let's get moving. Come on. Let's go. Yeah. Oh, you're finally back. Sorry we took so long. So we finally learn a little bit more about Santa's backstory. Let's go. So that we he gains sympathy from us, the <laughs> the player. I don't know, man. Ugh. Huh. Is, is this a warehouse? All right, guys. I'm gonna end the video here for today. Thank you all for watching. When we come back, we're gonna. I guess this is another area we need to. Uh, go through solve the puzzles and then continue on with the story so if anything else we're going to continue on in the next one so thank you all for watching